Well, good morning and happy Father's Day. What a wonderful day to know the Lord and to know Him as our Heavenly Father. You know, I was thinking about Father's Day and a lot of Father's Day sermons will be preached today and a lot of them will be aimed at men being better dads and sons being better children and daughters being better children. But you know, I want to just give glory to the Father of all, the God of all comfort and grace and mercy that he has poured out and shed upon our hearts and lives. And just be so thankful that he is our Heavenly Father. And you know, he said no good thing would he withhold from those who walk up right before him. And that Father wants to lavish his love upon us. And you know, I often think about my daddy and how he is so uh, willing. That if I just call him and say I have a need, he's going to try every way he can to meet that need for me. And so I have to be careful when I talk to him that I don't mention something that I might want or have a desire for because, you know, he's going to try to go out or he's going to try to give me the money to make that happen because he has the heart of a father that wants to bless his children. And I'm so thankful that I have an earthly daddy that way, but I am so much more thankful that I have a heavenly father because, you know, one day me or my dad, one of us are, are going to go be with the Lord, but the Lord is never going to be away from us. He is always going to be there. He said he'd be with us all the way, even until the end. And you know what? Then he'll just take us right on into his presence and we'll be with him forever and ever. And so I'm thankful for that. And so, you know, I want to just put focus on him today as our Heavenly Father. And also just say to all you guys out there, Happy Father's Day. And I pray that this is the greatest Father's Day of your life. And those of you who are expectant fathers, we often talk about expectant mothers, but those expectant dads at this time next year, you'll be a dad. Well, we just want to say, we just bless you too in the name of the Lord. And we just want to invite you to let us hear from you. And if you want to contact us, you can do so by uh, contacting me at Ministries at AOL.com. You can find us on Facebook by looking for Defining Moments radio station. You can also pull up some programs on YouTube by searching for Defining Moments with Evangelist Lynn Taylor. And pull up some of these programs that have already aired. This one will be available if you know a dad somewhere that will need to hear this message today. And you want him to hear it later, then this message will soon be uploaded to YouTube. And you can find it there as well. And send somebody a message. You know, it doesn't matter where they are. If they can read, pick up the World Wide Web and they are allowed to uh, visit YouTube in their country or their nation, they can hear these programs. And I just praise the Lord for that opportunity that our voices can go across the world. And today it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you a man of God that has, he and his wife have just become our friends and our are just part of our family and we just appreciate the Lord for everything that they have done for the kingdom of God and they're continuing to do for the kingdom of God. I also want to just say thank you to them because their sponsorship helps make this program possible. It helps us reach you because they are willing to sacrifice and give to help this program be on the air and I appreciate that. We both, Rick and myself, we appreciate that more than words can say. And today, Brother Terry Marler is going to come and, and share the Father's Day message with us. And I know the Lord has given him a word. Brother Terry is a pastor of Glenwood Assembly there in Glenwood, Alabama. And we have been in his church many times, and they have always been uh, just an exceptional blessing to us. And we appreciate them. So, Brother Terry, let me just welcome you to the mic today and say thank you for coming and welcome to Defining Moments. Brother, just let the Lord have his way. Yeah, good morning, Sister Lynn, and good morning to each and every one of you uh, in this audience this morning. Uh, it's Father's Day, and uh, we want to do something a little bit special for fathers and maybe teach a little bit and maybe preach a little bit and just share a little bit of uh, growing up with, with a good dad. But, you know, uh, the what is a father uh, is the main thing that I want to talk about this morning. 
And Webster's Dictionary just says a male parent, a man who creates or originates something. Uh, and that is their description this morning. I know the Bible has another description. But, you know, just because you can produce life biologically, that doesn't make you a father. Just like a, a lady that uh, has a child, that doesn't make her a mother. There is something special about a mother, and there is something very special about a father. Many years ago, well, about 35 years ago now, uh, we had our first son, and before we had him, I, I was really not too enthused about having children because I didn't think that I wanted children. But, you know, once I held that little bundle in my hands or in my arms, my heart just completely melted, and I, I done a 180. I, I couldn't... I couldn't be around him enough, you know. And I think back to to my father uh, when I was growing up. Me and my dad was real close. We worked. We had a farm, and we worked together, and we done a lot of things together. He taught me a lot. He taught me how to work. He taught me how to be reliable. And my dad taught me to be faithful because. I looked at the example that my father set for me, and the example was that he was trustworthy. He was faithful, and every time I was I needed him, he was always there. And also, when I done wrong, he was always there to correct me and tell me what I done wrong and make me know what I done wrong. But you know, a, a father is a very special person. But like I said, not just anyone can be a father. It takes that special one to be a father who loves that child no matter what. you know. And that's the way God loves us. He loves us no matter what we do and no matter where we go, how far we stray away from his kingdom, his love is still there. And that's the way of a father. It don't matter. Your son may do things that you don't approve of, or your daughter may do things that you don't approve of, but yet and still, you're, you still love them, and you still care for them, and you still try to look at, out for them. So many times we hear of fathers who uh, go through the act of, of biologically fathering a child and then no longer has any use for that child, and they go and, and leave and don't support that family or anything like that. You know, that, that's not in God's plan because God's plan is different. And each and every one of us this morning needs to conform more to the Bible than anything else. Now, we've got a lot of, of psychological ideas out there, but God wrote the book on it. And as long as we follow God's rule and God's standards for living, and God's standards for raising children, then those children is going to turn out the way that we want them to. Now, you take someone that uh, is without God, they, they smoke and they drink, and I'm, I'm just going to get down to bare metals this morning. They do everything imaginable. Well, guess what that child is going to do? Because that father is that example. And if you smoke pot, then they're going to smoke pot. It doesn't matter how good you think they are because you are setting the example. And that is the way that it's supposed to be. But now the example is supposed to be a godly example. Because God makes us men and fathers, the high priest of our house, we are supposed to lead and guide our household in a godly manner. And I'm telling you this morning, if you will do that, it will make a difference in your life and it will make a difference in your children's life. Amen? We are the ones who set that example. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I go back and I, I talk about or I think about this morning uh, a man called Noah. And I, I have a lot of respect for old Noah. Because God told him that the end of all things is come. 
And he saw a danger, and he decided to do what God asked him to do, and he prepared an ark. He prepared a way for his family to be saved. And a, a father today, that's what we need to do. We need to prepare our family for a voyage or a journey to where we don't know. But, you know, God knows where we're going. And if we will just follow God in everything that we do, then we can be a father that can be remembered as a father who was a godly father and a father who guided his children and his family. Noah built that ark. People laughed at him. People made fun of him, said it ain't never rained. You're, you're just being silly. There's nothing going to ever come of that. But that did not discourage old Noah. He kept going on, and he kept building that ark. And finally, one day it was finished, and God said, start gathering the people together, uh, gather your family together, gather all the animals together, because it's begin, it's going to begin to pour, it's going to begin to rain, and then it's going to be too late. Amen. So those uh, sons went out and they gathered the animals and they got them all in that ark. And the Bible records that God shut the door. Uh, Noah didn't shut that door, but God shut that door. And let me tell you, when God shuts the door, it shut. They want no man open a door that God shut. So he shut them in, and it began to rain. And guess what? That made a believer out of people. Then they looked at Noah in a different light. That man did know what he was talking about. They watched destruction coming. And I'm telling you today, fathers, there is destruction on the way. If we are not under that in covenant with Jesus Christ, there is danger coming. Your children are out in this world. They are apt to follow the devil, and he's out to kill and to steal and destroy each and every one of us and your children. And let me tell you, there's plenty out there in this world for those children to get into. You might think, well, my little Johnny, he won't do that. But you wait till little Johnny gets in a crowd of people his own age, and then you'll find out what little Johnny will do. Amen? He'll begin to do the things that they're doing, and he'll follow them. But you know what? If you've got a good example of a father, if you have loved that child, and if you have been there with that child and taught that child differently, then that child is going to know, I don't have no need of this. Uh, this is not what my father told me, but this is something that he told me not to do, and I believe my father this morning. But you know, it is a privilege for us t as fathers. It's a privilege for us to be fathers. Amen. But also, it can be a great challenge when you're dealing with a teenager and I know many of you out there this morning have teenage boys and you have teenage girls. That is a challenge, I'm telling you. It's worse than the terrible twos. But, you know, it's something that we can get through if we'll just hold on to God and we'll let God lead us and guide us in everything. You know, I, I, I go back to my dad. Now, my dad was not a super dad. He was just an average person. But you know what? He taught me some values, and he taught me some morals, and he taught me how to make a living. He taught me the basic things that I need to know to be able to go into this world and, and be successful. You know, I always remember him because everything we done, we did it together. And I remember that in the summertime, you, uh, some of you folks probably won't even know what I'm talking about, but in the summertime, you know, when the old cotton was ready to, to plant, it was ready to chop, we'd be out there early in the mornings, even before the sun come up, but I'd be with my dad, and all day long we would work hand in hand, 
But you know, I'll never forget those days. I'll never forget the times when we worked from sun up till dark. I'll never forget it because, you know, my dad was always talking to me and always trying to teach me. And I'll never forget that. And he instilled something into me that will never, never uh, go away. He taught me the value of being a man because my father was a good man. He was a good father. He was a good provider. And you know, today, if we are good providers and we're good fathers and we're good husbands, you know, that's going to make a difference in somebody's life. That child is going to see that that good example of what they should be. And, and I worry a lot of times about some of the examples that some fathers or so-called fathers uh, begin to portray. They're, they're not living as though they should, and they are teaching their children the wrong thing, mm -hmm. to go down that wrong road. But as godly fathers today, we need to portray that godliness in our life because that is the only way that we can be a true father. No, I'm not saying that if you're not a Christian that you can't love your children. That, that, that's, that would be wrong because if you're not a godly father, you can love that child and you can hold up standards. But what I'm saying is God gives us a lot more uh, information about being a godly man and a godly father in each and everything that we do each day. Amen. Amen. Being a father is not a bother. Being a father is a privilege. Sometimes, you know, we get to the point and we're having problems with our children. And, and we want to say, you know, they, they, they're, they're just a bother to me. But, you know, they're not. They're precious, and they are a life that has to be molded. And someone has to step up and make that mold. And if we mold them after a godly sort, then those children are going to go out and be successful for God. If we don't mold them in that sort of a, a, a standard, then there's no telling what they're going to go out to be. But fathers, our children need good leadership. They need good examples. And they need someone who is faithful to them. Someone who will be there whenever they need. You know, whether it be in the middle of the night or whether it be in the morning time. It doesn't matter. I have a son that lives in Birmingham and He's got an old truck. Every time something happens to that old truck, he's on the phone with Daddy because he's calling Daddy because he don't know. And he knows that Daddy will help him. He knows that Daddy will be there for him no matter what. Even if he's wrong, we're still there. And, you know, that's the way God is. That's the way God is to each and every one of us. God is always there. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And you know, when we begin to walk and we, we talk with God and we live that godly life, then God is always going to be there with us. In the matter, and no matter what happens, whether we are good, whether we're bad, you know, God is always there. And you know, fathers, if we take that as our example today and we love our children like the Father loves us, there won't nothing be able to separate us because God's love is never ending. And fathers, on this Father's Day, we just wish each and every one of you the very best, happiest Father's Day that you've ever had and just in closing today 
You know, we can see the end of things coming. We can see the destruction that is ahead. We can see what the world is turning to. And most likely we'll see that it's turning away from God. But today, I just want to leave you with these thoughts. What are we leaving our children? What kind of an example are we leaving them? Are we leaving them an example that will ensure that they survive? Or are we leaving them an example that they may not make it? Another question, is, is your ark prepared? We go back to Noah, and Noah built that ark. Now, he didn't save every family on earth, but you know, he saved his. He saved his family. And you know, fathers, that's what counts. It ain't nothing like knowing that your children, each and every one of them, is saved and on their way to heaven. That's a blessing, and that's something that fathers can do. Fathers can influence their children to be a godly sort. How? Well, one thing is don't send your children to church. You take your children to church, and you be there with them. And you encourage them, and you keep them strong. Read that Bible, have daily devotions, have family devotions. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible says that train up a child in the way that they should go, and they'll never, never depart. You know, they may go out for a season, but they'll come back eventually because that word God said, it will not return unto me void. It will accomplish what it's sent out to do. May God bless you today, and we'll turn it back over to Sister Lynn. We thank her so much for this opportunity, and we hope and pray that we have said something today that will encourage you and help you. Happy Father's Day to all of you this morning. What a good word to begin our Father's Day with. Yeah, I'm going to have to call and, and let my dad hear this word because, you know, like you're talking about your dad and what a, a, a legacy he left for you to be able to share about him right. and encourage others to follow a man such as that. Right. I think about uh, Brother Rick's dad. He owned a store and he had his hands in some different little things but his big main job was he ran a little country store and a lot of times people didn't pay their bills but you know he he died with people still owing him money but any time that you mention his name in the community or within a certain group of people within a, I mean it can be a wide range of miles you mention his name and people say, oh, I knew him. He was a good man. And it reminds me of the Proverbs that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And, you know, uh, when some of our kids were getting up to the age where they, praise God, we don't have teenagers. Hallelujah, we were delivered. We made it, Brother Terry. We made it through the teenagers. <laughs> That's right. But when they were going out and getting little jobs and People would say, okay, who are your relatives? You know, you fill out the application, and then they talk to you. Every time they found out who their grandfather were, was and had been, it marked them for excellence because his name came down through the generations as being somebody that was honest, mm -hmm. trustworthy, somebody that would uh, be prudent in their work and, and get to work on time and all these things because of a father that chose to go God's way right. and do things right. Thank you Amen. so much for sharing, Brother Terry. And we just want to bless you again and, and thank you for joining us. And just remember the words that he has shared here today and don't take them lightly. You know, that's why I had uh, prayed about having a pastor come and share on this program today because 
I know men can speak to men in, in a profound way. And just going back to what he said about Noah and, and what he said about him preparing a place. He didn't just prepare it for him and his wife, but it was for him and his wife and his sons and their wives. And, and through them, there, there was the pers preservation of mankind. And today, we look back over that. And, you know, Noah could have so easily said no to God. And he would have... He would have been lost. His children would have been lost. But God would have found a man. God would have raised up somebody to do what needed to be done. And so, you know, there, there's so many dads, like you said, that aren't a part of their children's lives. They're, they're not a part of what's going on. They're just, they're just the, the donor there. And when the child is born, they disappear. They're not a part of their life. And they're missing so much. They're missing the fact that True. they can raise up a godly generation that can help change this world for Jesus Christ, ensure that godly heritages will be passed down. And I'm so thankful for the godly men that, that God has placed around me. I'm thankful for my dad. I'm thankful for the father he was. I'm thankful for my husband and the father he is. I'm thankful for pastors that have been my spiritual mentors that have come along and have fathered me in the faith and I'm thankful for you brother Terry and for the father the heart of God that I see in your life because you have a heart for your people you don't just go to church and preach to them you're not just a pastor but you're a shepherd with the heart of a father that loves his people and I appreciate that and I appreciate what you and sister Joyce mean to me and my family and you know I just know this word is spoken to you today and I just want to encourage you, embrace everything you've heard. If you need a repeat, like I said, it will be on YouTube very soon. You know a man that needs to hear this message or, or just someone that needs encouraging. Just look for this and pull it up and let them hear it because I know their life will be touched for Jesus. And we just bless you today in the name of the Lord to go out and have a wonderful time in his presence. Have a wonderful time with your family. And of everything you've heard us say here today, remember this. When you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you, then you will experience your greatest defining moment.